The Life is Strange franchise has laid dormant for quite some time now. In September of 2021, developer Deck9 Games and publisher Square Enix ceremoniously welcomed Life is Strange True Colors as the newest addition to their long-standing franchise, dating all the way back to 2015. The game, unlike its predecessors, ditched its episodic release format in favour of one large release as a fully finished game, for the first time in the entire franchise. Square Enix spared no expense, a multi-platform marketing campaign spanning social media all the way from TikTok to Tumblr, thousands invested into ensuring this entry was going to be the magnum opus of their franchise, brand partnerships, a wide library of licensed music, and a game that promised, above all, to deliver an unforgettable, unprecedented experience. With a significant amount invested in this Return to Root style successor to the first Life is Strange game and the reinforced message of a new direction for the series, it seems surprising that as of 2024, this was the last we would ever hear of the Life is Strange franchise. The series seems to have gone out not with a fizzle, but with a bang. The series isn't completely dead in the water, but since the release of True Colors, there have been no major content releases, besides a couple of side comics detailing stories that few consider to be canon material anyway. So what gives? How did an iconic IP go from its biggest release since its inception to a life sitting on the dusty shelf? Hello everybody, my name is Sarita Cucumber, and today, I'm here to talk about the future of Life is Strange, Don't Not Entertainment, and why their upcoming title Lost Records might be the spark to relight the franchise's dwindling flame. But wait, let's go back. What the hell is Lost Records? Where did all this come from? What does this have to do with Life is Strange? Many of you will already know parts of the story I'm about to tell, but please trust me on this one. Let's rewind. The story started 11 years ago, in April 2013, in France. A young, promising developer, Don't Nod Entertainment, had just published their debut action-adventure game titled Remember Me, a game that, ironically, is remembered by very few. Don't get me wrong, it was a decent game. It had decent graphics, a decent story, and decent gameplay. And that's all there really is to say. When you're trying to break into an industry that's so dominated by AAA titles with infinite budgets, creating an average, playable game just isn't enough. The studio was financially struggling after the game's mixed reception, needing to accept aid totalling just shy of 1 million euros from an agency of the French Ministry of Culture, leading to Don't Nod becoming its most subsidised studio in 2013. Things were looking very bleak. The studio lay on the brink of falling to the wayside as just another failed game developer struggling to break the mould, to create something worthy of a legacy. All that was about to change in June of 2014, when Don't Nod announced a new project they were working on, an episodic title you know as Life is Strange. To say that the release of Life is Strange saved Don't Nod from the brink of financial ruin would be a gross understatement. Now this is where our story really kicks off. Don't Nod had enlisted major publisher Square Enix, who many of you will be familiar with, to work alongside to get this game into the public sphere. Square Enix were chosen specifically by Don't Nod as they were one of the only publishers who saw promise in the studio's vision of a female lead character, something that was a little bit more controversial in that era of gaming. When the game hit the shelves in 2015, it was a sensation. Fans fell in love with the game's unique charm, art and storytelling. It was unlike any other game that had released at the time. The game was covered extensively by famous YouTubers such as PewDiePie, who broadcast the game to millions of potential players, and suddenly, Life is Strange was an overnight indie hit, and is still revered as a classic to this day. This commercial success put Don't Nod Entertainment on the map. They'd gone from seeking out publishers and pitching their ideas in boardrooms to being sought out themselves by industry-leading professionals looking to collaborate with them. But their partnership with Square Enix continued. Now, this is where things start to get a little odd, and it might be a good idea to bring up Don't Nod's core game development philosophy. Don't Nod saw the writing on the wall an industry that was showing early signs of becoming derivative and highly profit-driven, seeing franchises be diluted by remasters, remakes, prequels and sequels. They expressed their lack of a desire to become like most modern gaming studios, 
They said that original, narrative-driven intellectual properties would always be their focus, as it was part of their DNA. They liked to use this phrase a lot, and we'll be revisiting it later on. Their guiding principle remained to reinvent themselves with each new release. So, Don't Nod were very vocal about derivative modern game franchises. They even outwardly expressed on multiple occasions after releasing their first game that, despite outcry and demand for a sequel to the original Life is Strange, they had no interest or intention of revisiting the franchise to bring these beloved characters back. They believed the stories of these characters in that world were complete, and that touching them might be an insult to their memory. The dust appeared to have settled. It was surprising, then, when Square Enix announced in mid-2017 at E3 that Life is Strange would be receiving a prequel under the now well-known subtitle Before the Storm. Before the Storm sought to address a few of the game's story gaps. In the five year timescale that was explored through Life is Strange's time travel mechanic, we only saw the beginning and the end of the picture. Now references were made to the time between, but fans were inevitably left with a gap, and a lot of people wanted more. And so, in spirit of continuing the success that the first game had brought them, publisher Square Enix enlisted developer Deck Nine Games to develop the title in the style of Don't Nod Entertainment, totally circumventing the original studio to bring the mystery of Rachel Amber to life. Now, of course, companies always try to maintain outwardly pleasant relationships, especially in an industry such as this. All game developers and publishers are all sitting in a hot tub together, and if one of them pees, they all get dirty. But in a purely speculative sense, I imagine it's no coincidence that Square Enix sought the help of another development studio to assist with the game, given Don't Nod's outward views about creating media for the sake of fan service. Life is Strange Before the Storm was not an instant cult hit like its predecessor, but it performed well. It was picked up by all of the same YouTubers, given the same media highlights as the original, and fans of the first game were desperate to get this thing into their libraries. Safe to say, it was an overall positive move for Square Enix. That brings us to 2018, and 2019, and 2020 really. The release of Life is Strange 2. This game, which I've covered extensively on this channel, was actually developed by the original developers of the series, Don't Nod Entertainment. This game took a completely different approach to Before the Storm though. It promised something new, something different, a completely new cast of characters, reimagined themes, different ways to challenge the player's mindset. Don't Nod were not lying about wanting to reinvent the wheel each time they made a new game. It was their goal to turn the franchise into an anthology a medium for telling stories. These stories would all be self-contained and separate, with maybe some references to them being in the same universe linking them together. They would convey the DNA of Life is Strange. Quite early, we admitted that we wanted to do something different, uh, go with new story, new characters. In the third game, we told the story of Max and Chloe, of course, but it was a whole story. It was a finished story for us. Life is Strange series is about everyday, relatable characters facing universal issues laced with a twist of the strange. Which they explained to be ordinary people with a twist of the strange, referring to the game's supernatural powers. Sadly, Life is Strange 2 was significantly less successful than the first game and was met with mixed reception. It won awards, yes, it was a good game, 
but it had several oddities about it. Fans of the first game felt that it was disappointing after Before the Storm, and instead hoped they'd see a continuation of the story from the original title. It was a complete narrative detour for the franchise. It struggled to retain the attention of people who'd fallen in love with the first game solely for the characters. It introduced new themes to the narrative, racism, familial love, religious trauma, and freedom, as opposed to the classic nostalgia, coming of age, gay love, and the passage of time we'd been accustomed to. Now, this was not to say that it was not a good game, but it wasn't something fans asked for, nor was it something that Square Enix seemed to be asking for. The game received honestly subpar marketing, with really long waits between episodes. One or two of these things might have been fine, but the culmination of all of Life is Strange 2's problems led people to be largely disappointed in Don't Nod's ability to deliver on a story, and Square Enix weren't particularly interested in furthering the game's legacy. Life is Strange 2 gradually became the forgotten middle child of the series. Don't Nod had not proven they could make an anthology series that could captivate people as much as their original hit had five years prior. While characters from every other mainline release were adorned with comic books, DLC games, novels, remasters, and ports, Don't Nod's second game lay forgotten. Right before a monumental event that would alter the course of the series forever in 2021, Don't Nod reported to Eurogamer that they wished to be done with the franchise. It seemed to an onlooker that Square Enix were likely unhappy with the sales from Life is Strange 2 and may have requested a return to roots formula to rally fans of the original, who felt disenfranchised by Don't Nod for pursuing their vision instead of what fans expected. Unhappy fans equals less sales, equals unhappy publisher. It seemed then, at this point, with Square Enix holding the rights to Life is Strange, Don't Nod expressing no interest in the game, that they would hand the keys over to Deck Nine, due to their willingness to work on projects that were more marketable to fans of the less experimental entries, while Don't Nod would take a back seat to work on their passion projects. We'll come back to this part later. It was clear that the Life is Strange developers were not too happy with constantly being flooded with racism and hatred towards their new game, nor how quickly Square Enix would move on to the next game in the franchise, which would, again, be developed by Deck Nine Games. And that brings us to our aforementioned 2021 release, Life is Strange True Colors. Promising to right all the wrongs of 2018's Forgotten Child, Deck Nine took a lot of effort to assimilate to what had made the original title so magical. Some would argue too much effort, in fact. The game, despite being high budget, looking and feeling amazing to play, just didn't offer a unique story in a way that gripped players as much. I made an entire two hour video essay about that topic if that's something you're interested in. True Colors straight up borrowed story beats from the original game, but wrapped itself in a shiny, fresh coat of paint with some new characters, music, and a new town. But at the end of the day, it remained the same shy girl meets somebody in a small cozy town they've not seen in years, and before they get the chance to reunite properly, said person is killed off under the influence of an older, seemingly caring male guardian figure, using a young, mentally unstable man as a red herring for his crimes. Now there's more nuance than that. They do change story elements around, but it's the same jigsaw pieces just rearranged differently. True Colors, while a good game, wasn't particularly memorable and didn't deliver on what made the original special. There was a minor ripple in the water a few weeks later in the form of the game's DLC title Wavelengths, which sought to give the spotlight to a beloved legacy character from 2017's Before the Storm. But other than that, nothing. Silence. Like I said, the details are murky. But it seems to me that Square Enix were likely pressuring Don't Nod to create games to garner sales. 
the possibility of a direct sequel to 2015's captivating story was very likely on the table, and was equally likely turned down by the French studio, all leading back to their original philosophy of wanting to create art for the sake of art, and not for the sake of pandering or profit. Deck Nine, however, were happy to take up the mantle on these projects, and so it's likely that following Square Enix wishing to milk the IP for all it was worth, Don't Nod decided they were done with it. So, what have Don't Nod Entertainment been up to in their time since? What kind of things have they been exploring with their newfound freedom over their new creative licenses? Well... <laughs> Enter stage left, Lost Records. At the 2023 Game Awards, Don't Nod Entertainment announced a completely new IP, Lost Records, with the subtitle Bloom and Rage. Even just watching the trailer, the 90s vibes, the blatantly queer characters, grungy punk music, supernatural goings on, even down to the deer symbolism, it's so clear that Don't Nod are doing what they do best, creating a strong identity for a game with new characters. We've had this opportunity to create this studio on the basis that we wanted, the game's executive producer told Digital Trends. Now, for the first time, we can build a strategy regarding how we're going to make this a studio dedicated to this franchise. We shape the way we work, the creative, the team, the production, the tools, the tech, everything is made toward this goal. It's the Lost Records franchise, but also the Don't Nod Montreal project. Don't Nod had such little control over the Life is Strange franchise once it was signed off to Square Enix, they were bogged down with what publishers expected from the game. This new team dedicated to Lost Records is nearly the exact same team that worked to push out Life is Strange nearly 10 years ago. A team of passionate creatives who want to deliver stories above all else. They even go as far as to slap from the creators of Life is Strange at the start of the trailer, something they don't do for their other releases. They specifically want their audiences to expect something similar to the first game's experience. If Don't Nod can't have Life is Strange, they can have one thing. The DNA of it. Ordinary people with a twist of the strange. Exploring those nostalgic themes of the mid-90s with queer protagonists, they're trying to continue their legacy of making Life is Strange games, just under a different name. Everything about this trailer harkens back to their track record of incredible storytelling with memorable, lovable characters and themes that make you think beyond the sphere of the world you play in. And make no mistake, this is not planned to be a single one and done project. Don't not aim to carve out a future for the studio with this entry to the series, one where nobody tells them what they can and can't do, where they stick true to their philosophies and make good on the promises they made to themselves all the way back in 2013 as a struggling studio. To reinvent themselves with each new release, to tell the stories they want to, not the stories that'll make the executives the most money. I can't speak on the future of Life is Strange with any reasonable degree of certainty. The series is currently sitting in the middle of the sea, on an indefinite, unofficial hiatus with no releases on the horizon, just drifting until the next announcement. The official social media accounts for the games lay relatively dormant, save for fan art posts and character birthday announcements. Deck Nine Entertainment has just undergone major layoffs following most of the games industry at the moment, with over 20% of their staff being impacted. It's really hard to say where the future of the franchise or the studio is headed. Deck Nine have a track record of making great games, and I sincerely hope they continue to do so, whether with the Life is Strange franchise or not. There may be a wider point to be made here about whether it's right for the franchise to die out here and now, but I suspect that in the next few years we might see a Deck Nine published Max and Chloe sequel under the guise of Square Enix looking to appeal to fans of the original anyway, so we'll see. This is potentially the most exciting of any Life is Strange related announcement, especially for fans of the original. And while it's taken me a long time to get this video out, I hope you'll join me in celebrating Don't Nod's new era of cinematic storytelling. I'm so excited to learn more about this title and to indulge in an experience that will no doubt impress and challenge its audiences, just how those silly French men do best. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been a while, but I have not forgotten about this place. Life has just been extremely busy with many details I won't bore you with, but I hope you enjoyed. This is my first video in a long time, so please excuse any rough edges for the time being. This isn't the last time I plan on putting something out there, and it's likely not going to be the last time I neglect my channel for a large span of time, but you come here for the content, not the consistency of it. If you did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and leave a comment with your thoughts on Don't Not's Pursuit of Artistic Liberty, the series in general, or just anything really. If you'd like to show your support in the form of leaving me a tip, I'll have my Patreon linked in the description too, and join our Discord server to chat about all things Life is Strange. But with that, I think I said my piece, and for the first time in almost two years, remember to keep your cucumbers serrated, and have a nice day. Au revoir!